Oh, welcome back. Oh, welcome back to Chase Chap Chaps, where we <laughs> complain about the future, technology, and <laughs> bad games that people seem to fucking love. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, dude. I don't even know, like, what, like, any new games coming out. Like, I haven't been paying attention to that shit, like, at all. Yeah. <laughs> so I really don't know what's coming out, and I don't really care. The only new game I know that's coming out is Diablo 4. Yeah. And that's just well, and because then, yeah. I'm into that space. Well, and then they got the new Zelda, like I say. You know, yeah, I for, I'll probably for, totally forgot about it. I'll probably pick it up, but, like, it's, I uh... because I don't got no Nintendo. I gave up on Nintendo after GameCube. I pretty much did, too. But I mean, I had a, I had a Wii. I think Wii was like the last thing that I was really into for a while from Nintendo. You know, I just didn't like the motion controls. Oh, I didn't either. But I'm just saying, like, you know, they were fun at first. But then, like, after a while, you're like, they were yeah, a okay. gimmick. Yeah, they're gimmicky. But like, I think, um, no, at first it was fine. What is this thing? Pile of moon juice. Yes, I know I can shoot the fucking Zerp stones. You pieces of shit! I think it's a teleporter, I think is what it is. Yeah, it's a teleporter. Don't forget to get all those ones on top of the um, thingies. Yeah, that's like how now that I can shoot the fireballs, I can get all of them. <clears throat> um, but yeah. yeah, no, I gave up on them after GameCube. I think, I think the Switch is a great console. Um, I actually do think it's really good. Um, the issue with it is simply the same issue that Nintendo has been facing for, you know, pretty much since the GameCube was the that there's just not a lot of software that really would, I think, push the system. Like, yeah. you know, that makes people want to get it. Like, obviously there's all the, the Mario games and stuff, which are fine, but, like, for a 30-something-year-old, for me personally... It just isn't that interesting anymore. <laughs> yeah, like they're fine. Like, Mar like I bought Mario Odyssey. I've only played it for like maybe I don't know. An See, hour I'm or two. just not like <laughs> I'm not big on platformers anymore. Yeah, I didn't think th I think there can be some good ones, but yeah, yes, it's like yes. yeah, it's but just the way you know, platformers have been yeah. really haven't been no. ever since. Uh, ever since I played. Uh, Fucking uh, sunshine! That was the last platform I really played. Yeah, <clears throat> that one was good. I like that one a lot. Cause you know I love platformers back in the day. Yeah, play Banjo Kazooie, Banjo Tooie, yeah, uh, right. Spyro. Yeah, all those good ones. Yeah, um, I don't know. I just think that Nintendo needs to fucking. I think Nintendo needs to die. Well, they're getting there. <laughs> there's enough people too that like it like I feel like there's been like a good a decent like um, amount of people that are kind of like pushing back against Nintendo and some of their practices which is yeah like I you don't want to see that with any company but like at least there's people who are kind of like privy to like you know some of the bullshit that they're trying to pull yeah which they have been yeah well like you know the whole like here, buy a poorly emulated version of a N64 game that we're selling for 20 bucks. Or you could just download the dem the Dolphin emulator for free and get it. That's illegal! I know. <laughs> People seem to be okay with pirating their games, though. That's the yeah. thing. <laughs> it's because, because Nintendo yeah. doesn't re-release their games... Well, and they have no. And when they do, it's always like a really shitty limited time kind of thing. Yeah, and it's a bad deal most of yeah, the time. It is. Well, and they don't even emulate their own software very well. That's the other thing is that they just like you know can't even like emulate their own fucking games. Oh, did you know you can launch Dolphin on Steam now? Yeah, I saw that. Um, and I was thinking to myself, I'm like, that's a good way to get canceled by Nintendo. So I don't. Like, I don't know. Um, no, I mean, there are no Nintendo games on Steam. I know. So, it's not like, who who the so fuck you're is just, this caring So about? you're just launching it through... Launching it through Steam. Through Steam, and then does that, like, 
What's the advantage of doing that? Uh, you can set it up a little bit easier. Oh, okay. Because it will automatically kind of set up, and it's more trusted that way. Mm. Because it's through a big okay. company kind of thing. The Dolphin emulator's been around for a while, too. Yeah. So, like, that's a pretty prominent, like, thing. And, I don't know. It's probably something, you know, Steam's just like, yeah. Nintendo's never going to let us put any of their games on our service. Yeah, right. So fuck them. Let's just put a thing that... Uh, <laughs> that everybody has anyway. <laughs> yeah, that everyone has anyway that can, you know, play their play their games for free. This fucking level looks insane, Yeah. by the way. Uh, I remember when I came here, I'm like, holy shit. Real pretty. I like the blues. I like the purples. But I mean, like, nice just reds. but like, just that this is a fucking ratchet game, and like, this is like a level in it, like that. Right. That's fucking insane. It looks and wild. Those greens, yeah, and like, I don't know, I like the, the colors. They do a really good job, like, of at least, like, I don't know, like, how they have managed to like create the illusion of space and distance, but it looks fucking amazing. Yeah, like, really good. Um, but yeah, I don't know. They, the funny thing is though, too, like, so Nintendo is, like, notorious for, like, not giving a shit about, like, um, pre- like, digital preservation of their, uh, own games. Yeah. Like, that's something that they just don't... No, if their they games don't do. die... <laughs> yeah. Like, a lot of games, their batteries are gonna be dying very soon. Oh, so yeah. So if you have a cartridge of it, uh uh-huh. it doesn't matter if you do or not, because it's going to die. Yep. And the only way to play that is going to be emulation because Nintendo yeah. doesn't yep. offer it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's still illegal. And Nintendo will sue your butt. Yeah. But that's the thing that I don't think they, they don't seem to understand either. Like, I'm not talking, like, specifically, like, just, like, the Dolphin stuff, although it is kind of doing this. But, like, there's, like, these people who are doing, like, revival projects or updates or like fan made oh, yeah, projects yeah. and yeah, stuff. Yeah, fan made updates. Like, yeah. And it's oh, like we put the Nintendo uh, uh, Super Mario uh, RPG into um, into uh, Unreal 5 and we're making it for free and people will yeah. be able to play it and then Nintendo's like nope. Yeah, or like somebody was doing a Metroid Prime 2D version of the game. Like a, like a side scroller, you know. And it's like, you know, that's a cool fan-made project, and then they canceled that. She's freaking out. Yeah. I kind of like this level because of this. You go back and forth between dimensions, and, like, one is, like, the destroyed station, and the other one is before... Um, I like I like this like kind of idea like I always like like in, in like a sci-fi type of universe where like you go to like you cut, happen across this like destroyed like colony or yeah and then something. you can go back to when yeah you know either before its destruction or in yeah. another universe where it isn't destroyed yeah I think I always liked that I thought it was really cool like there were a couple levels like that and like uh i don't know like republic commando and shit or something yeah i don't know it's random shit but yeah i don't know fuck nintendo yep <laughs> bad bad consumer yeah well that, and that was the thing for a long time that like you know fanboys were saying it was like nintendo was like really pro consumer and it's like they're not no they're not <laughs> they're the opposite like, they're <laughs> probably the worst one they probably are the worst one i would say <laughs> I mean, maybe at first, like, they were kind of like that, but I yeah. don't know. But then they really shifted. Yeah. I don't know if it's like, um, I really don't know the background. I don't really look into it a whole lot. I don't really think about it too much. But, like, I wonder if it was like, um, uh, what's his name? Satoru Iwata passed away mm-hmm. a couple and years ago. became more corporate and, yeah, yeah I'm not sure if that was like a direct result of, of his passing or I, I don't really know I'm not sure um but yeah I don't know I think they just are like any other video game company they just want money yeah and I mean I get it you know I'm talking I'm, we're playing fucking Sony shit and they're the same goddamn way they just want money yep 
Oh, so I saw the uh, Mario movie. <clears throat> oh, did you? Yes. How was that? Uh, exactly how you would probably picture it. It looks like fun. I don't really care about seeing it. For me, I haven't really looked into it a lot, and I'm not saying that this is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. But for me, every time I had ever seen like like trailer footage or anything, the voiceover just doesn't match for me. But I think it's just because I'm so used to hearing Mario and just do the yeah. whoopee Yahoo thing. <laughs> Yahoo. Yeah, so like hearing Chris Pratt do it is kind of just like, huh? Yeah. Actually, Chris Pratt wasn't distracting at all. Okay, that's what I figure. I figure it's fine. Like I, I just think like that's just like the immediate kind of jarring reaction that I have to it. But I'm sure that I'm sure the movie works fine. You know who's playing uh, Luigi? Uh, Charlie Day. Yes. <laughs> Him is far more noticeable. Yeah. Than Mario is. Isa. Yeah. Just just a, it's just an interesting casting choice, and I and I've been seeing obviously all the meme shit with like Jack Black as Bowser, like he's fucking living it up, which I think is fantastic. Like I think that it's funny that he enjoys it so much. Yeah, he's the one who's probably the most distracting, just in terms of yeah, that's clearly Jack Black. Yeah, but he does try to put on a thing. Yeah, I think they be... I think they do they affect his voice a little bit maybe. I think so. Yeah. So, but yeah, yeah. he's been. I, I see he's been having fun with it, so I think that's great. Yeah. Now, give me give me a synopsis of the the movie, and I'll let you know how close you are. Um, from what I can tell, um, I understand that they tried to make uh, uh, Peach a little bit more of a less of a damsel in distress and more of a actual character. So, but at the end of the day, it probably boils down to. Um, Bowser either kidnaps somebody or attempts to kidnap somebody and then it becomes an act of war and then they're like fighting each other basically and then Donkey Kong is somehow involved um, whether he's the kidnapper or um, just a cohort in the whole scheme I don't know but that would be my guess okay do you want to know yeah sure I don't care all right Mario and Luigi we're trying to actually run the fucking plumbing business. <laughs> yes, actually. Are plumbers in Brooklyn. So they are in real life. Yeah. Brooklyn. And they are trying to save the town from a water leak. Oh. A major one. And then they get sucked into the Mushroom Kingdom. Oh, that's interesting. So kind of like, you know, the original Mario movie with... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, they get sucked into it. John Leguizamo or something? Yes. And... See, that's, see, that's, get that's, more, that's more interesting. That's a better way to do it than just like, here's Mario and Luigi in the Mushroom Kingdom. Yeah. Like, even though that in itself, like, them getting transported to another, like, world is kind of a trope in itself, like, but that's more interesting, I yes. think. Yes. So, so they're all kind of like, what the fuck is any of this shit? <laughs> <laughs> so they get split up. Luigi is sent to Bowser's area. And Mario is sent to the Mushroom Kingdom. Um, Luigi is captured. Obviously. Uh, and Mario meets Princess Peach, falls in love with her. Yeah. Um... And the they found out that Bowser got the superstar, so now he's going to come over and destroy their kingdom. Oh. Um, Luigi finds out that Bowser got the superstar and is going over to the Mushroom Kingdom to propose marriage to Princess Peach. Oh. So... Yeah, he, he loves her and wants to be with her and all who, that. Who plays Peach again? I forget. I don't know. Just no. some girl. <laughs> the girl has it. Oh, I think I think it was Anya Taylor Joy. Yeah, that sounds right. I think that's who it was. She does well. Yeah, uh, she is not a girl boss, and she is not a damsel in distress. She is middle ground. 
Okay. So well, I thought that was like their, well. I thought that was their thing that they were trying to do. Anyway. Yeah, they they actually just made her into a character, like an actual person. That's good. Um, let's see. Uh, so what they've decided to do is Peach and Mario do a montage and get Mario all ready to. Uh, start doing stuff and then they go to get the DK army so they go over to Donkey Kong area and then they do some go-kart racing oh so, so they're fitting in all the shit yeah I remember in the trailers there's like they fight or whatever and it's yep they fight shit to whatever. get the uh, Kong army um, Cranky Kong is an old Jewish man with a <laughs> nostril problem <laughs> okay and uh yeah, basically, they, uh... Oh, no, Taylor! <laughs> basically, uh, yeah. They, uh... Oh, I see. Okay. They get the Kong army, they go on Rainbow Road. Uh, the Kong army and them get, uh, split up. Rainbow Rizzle. And, uh... Nizzle. Mario and DK have to get out of the water, just so they do a water level, and then, um... Yeah. So that goes through the motions, in a yeah. sense. Yeah. They go and try to That's save fine. everyone Whatever. from Bowser and Peach's forced wedding. I um, don't, um... I don't think anybody really expected, like, a, a, a burner of a story. Yeah. With, with Mario. And then, like... Mario uh, causes a warp pipe to explode by shooting a giant uh, bullet bill at it, which then brings the whole Mushroom Kingdom and Brooklyn together. Oh no. So then Mario is trying to fight Bowser, but he has no power ups or anything, and Bowser is whooping his ass. Oh no. And then everyone else starts to join in to help Mario, and then Mario finally. Uh, uh, gets the courage to uh, stand up and fight Bowser again, and gets the superstar with Luigi, oh. and then Luigi and Mario. And then they do the fusion hob dance, and then they yeah, and then they they kill they kill Bowser. <laughs> they rip his head off, they... and then he's just like peaches, peaches, peaches. <laughs> and she comes up and takes uh, and Bowser's blows head. Right there. <laughs> takes Bowser's head. And feeds him a little, the little uh, mushroom, and then uh, the he one. turns into a small thing, no. a small, a small Bowser, and then they're <laughs> like, She's like, "We I'm put, save the day." I'm gonna put you up my pussy. <laughs> Is that what you like, Bowser? He's like, "Yes, yes, please, peaches, peaches, peaches." <laughs> and yeah, they, uh, they, do, they do that song twice, one at the middle, and then one. Uh, once again at the uh, that's the ending. <laughs> I think that song is like up for like some awards or some shit. It's which I not think, that great. I mean, just, I, well, I think it's funny because it's a song that was like it sounds like he wrote it in like three seconds. Yeah, he like, probably just sat there. Sounds like he just made it up on the spot. Yeah, he you know? he just sat at a piano, started hitting something, and he's like, okay, yeah, that sounds pretty good. And, then he's like, and that's nothing. Peach, 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 yeah, and that's peach. nothing. That's nothing against like you know Jack Black, but I mean, it's just Melissa that's showed pretty me low quality. Little, ice. Yeah, Melissa showed me the video. I think the video is fun. Like the, I'm sure you've seen the video of him doing the song. Yes, because it's in the movie. Yeah, like well, I mean, like him, like you know, like oh, actual, like Jack actual Black? Jack Black. There's oh, a okay. music video of him doing it, and I'm like, no. that, that's like I haven't seen that. It's before. a fun little video. It's fine. You know, it's him dressed up like Bowser, and he's in like a peach colored room, and he's playing a peach colored piano and singing the song. But yeah, the song, I'm like, I don't really like the song that much, if I'm being completely honest. It's literally just him saying Peaches, Peaches, I know. Peaches. It's not a good, like, it's not a good, like, word to repeat over and over again. No. It just it doesn't lend itself well to that, I don't think. But whatever. It's it's a quick little fun song for the movie. It's fine. What I thought they should have done, I think they should have got the presidents of the United States of America to help him write the song. Because I already have a song about peaches. Yeah. So. Are they still a band? I don't know. Maybe. I hope so. 
But it's like they they're the kings of, of <laughs> songs about songs. peaches. Yeah. yeah, like they should have had them collab on it and you know, do the song. But they really should have played that song too. Yeah, just fucking. That's a missed opportunity, I think. But I don't know. Well, everyone's going down Rainbow Road. Just peaches, billions of peaches, peaches all day. Yeah, billions mm-hmm. of peaches, peaches from green. Yeah, yeah, just. Look out, down there. Would, I mean, honestly, it they worked. deserve it. <laughs> you know, you know how like you know, uh, what's its name? Fucking uh, Metallica got a bump from from Stranger Things. Yeah, that's what Presidents of the United States of America need from the yeah. Mario movie. Yeah, it would have been great. Get a little bit of a little bit of a bump. Get their Spotify numbers up. You know. But yeah, so overall, it's fine, huh? Uh, it was exactly what you would expect from like a Mario movie, and it has a lot of you know kid humor. That's fine. Not really money at all. I I remember I think there wasn't there the controversy recently with that one too. I know John Leguizamo. I think I think that's his name, the guy who played yep. Luigi in the original movie. Yeah, he was all butt hurt because he's like get get actual Italians to play in the movie. Like I should have been in the movie. It's like fuck you, dude. <laughs> Like, you haven't been in demand since that movie came out. Yeah. <laughs> like, shut up. You are a <laughs> 90s and 80s actor. Yeah. Like, you are no longer... Like, no, you're no longer in demand. I don't... Was that a controversy with the movie? That they weren't getting Italian people to play? I mean, yeah, people were complaining about it, but there's always a controversy. Yeah, I was say, there's always fucking people. And then the, a movie like fucking Everything Everywhere All at Once comes out, and then they're like, there's not enough white people in this movie. Have you, have you have you seen that movie? No, I haven't. So it, it swept the Academy Awards. I saw there were some Asian people in the movie. Yeah, they're all Asian. Every like character in it, except Jimmy Lee Curtis, is Asian. Yeah. She won an Oscar for that movie, and I don't think she deserved it. I'm gonna be honest with you. Okay. I'll, she was I'll a go. supporting. She was a supporting actor, and she was a fine supporting actor. But she like has like she's really not like. She doesn't have any, like, big actor parts. Like, you know, it's just... I don't know. The movie's a fucking, like, fever dream, though. Like, I don't know. It it was interesting, but, like, I kind of tuned out, like, halfway through, if I'm being honest. Because it just... They throw so goddamn much stuff at you in the movie. Um, It's kind of like this game, in a sense, that they... There's, like, all these different, like, dimensions and shit. And it just, like... It gets fucking wild. And it, like, I, like, was, like, I, this is too much. <laughs> it's one of those kind of movies. There's another movie like that that did that, where, like, it kind of goes off the rails, and, like, I just, like, like after a point, like, I can't fucking, like, understand. Yeah, I can't, like, right? can't comprehend what the fuck is even going on anymore. I forgot what it was, but there was another movie like that, and it just kept going. Like, it just didn't, like... <laughs> Give you, you any, yeah, it like didn't give you any reprieve or any time to really like comprehend what you just saw. <laughs> uh, there was one I can't remember what it was, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't probably, I'm probably not going to see the Mario movie. I really don't care. But good that it was fine. <laughs> yeah, you know, I assumed it would have been a fine. A lot, lot of records. I know. I'm surprised that they never made a movie sooner, but I guess it's just because Nintendo is so fucking picky about their yeah their um, intellectual properties. And you know, I'm gonna say, Sonic, the movie, the first one worse than this Mario movie. Oh yeah. But the second one is better than the this Mario movie. Really? Yes. Okay. I haven't seen either of them, so. I just liked Jim Carrey. Yeah. Well. You got Jim Carrey on board, then it's going to be at least somewhat that was, watchable. That was his last movie. You got yeah, tired. I know. <laughs> but like, that's an interesting movie to... To end your career on? Yeah. Fucking, I just heard that, um... What's his name? Uh, Clint Eastwood is, like, working on his last movie now. Yep. Which is fucking nuts, because the dude's, like, 90-something. Yeah, I'm guessing uh, he needs one last dollar. Yeah. I felt bad with, like, uh, I'm sure you heard about Bruce Willis. 
Uh, yeah, with his... Uh, he has, like, dementia or whatever. Yeah, dementia. Yeah. I felt bad that he, like, kind of, like, was forced into retirement, but, like, what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that's life. Yeah. I think, uh, I think Tarantino was on his last movie, too. I think. I haven't heard anything about that one. He was working on something. I forgot what it involved. But I heard, like, kind of rumors going around, like, about whatever he was working on next. And it was, um, yeah, I forgot what it was. But he supposed, allegedly, like, you know, as he had said before, every director's got ten good movies in him, as he, as he put it. So he's on his tenth movie. Oh, okay. So, so. If I think he's, it feels like he's holding true to what he said. So I think he's going to, you know... Do this direct, last one. direct this last one, and then maybe he'll write. Who knows? I, I think he could just keep going if he wanted to. But <laughs> well, then he would be a hypocrite. Yeah. But people are hypocrites all the time. So yeah. Maybe you know he'll feel like he's the exception. I think he has yet to put out a movie that I haven't enjoyed at least in some capacity. Like I always talk shit about Django. I didn't really like that movie very much. See, for me, it's the Kill Bills. I liked them, but I never felt the need to go back to them. Yeah. Yeah, the Kill Bills, I can understand. They kind of tap into, like, um, old, like, car- like kung fu and martial arts movies and stuff. Like, samurai movies. That was kind of, like, um, his uh, kind of foray into that. And that's the thing with Tarantino. Like, you can kind of tell, like, with each movie that he makes that it's, like, he's pulling from, like, a genre that he's a fan of. You yeah. You know? Like... I kind of got that from like Hateful Eight and, and Django, where he's pulling from like these Western movies, and then um, obviously with Kill Bill, it's more of like a um, like samurai, old samurai movies and stuff like that. And then some of the other stuff like Pulp Fiction is kind of like a, like almost like a seventies esque crime sort of thing, you know? Yep. Even though it's like in the nineties or whatever. Yeah. So I don't know. I think he'd be. Uh, he could keep doing whatever he's doing. But I like the one where there's the feet of the girl. So every movie that he's ever made. <laughs> <laughs> so literally every movie he's ever made. Yep, every single one of them. <laughs> That's the funny thing. Like once you know that, you notice it. You notice like every <laughs> shot or every single thing that he's ever made that has like a like a like a foot part in it, you're like, okay, yep. That's a very self-servicing thing right there. Yep. he's He is just getting actresses that he finds attractive to... Put their feet somewhere. Put their feet somewhere that... Yeah. And if he can touch them, even better. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, and fucking from dusk till dawn, he's got the one lady put her f- foot in his mouth, yep. and then she pours the fucking beer down her leg. Yep. And then uh, <laughs> that one where they're, uh, they're the four girls with the car... Death proof. Yeah, death proof. Yeah. Um, the feet massage. Oh yeah, the foot massage. Yep. Yeah. He uh, he said that he would do it. It's all him. Um. <laughs> so the the hands were him. Yeah. Now the did one- they did they do a like the version of that I watched they cut the the lap dance part. Now was that ever like a there was ever a, a cut of the movie that had it in there. I don't know. Because I remember I watched it, and then it just says, like, foot, the footage missing. Because, like, that was, like, their whole, like, fake double feature that they made. Like, him and, what's the other guy's name? Robert Rodriguez or something? Yeah. Anyway, what was what were you going to say? Um, the one weird one... you hear that? No. The one weird one is, uh, the, uh... In Inglorious Bastards, where he uh, personally strangles the uh, oh yeah the girl yep yep and her shoe comes off during it yeah was that scripted I don't know I don't know <laughs> I'm sure Tarantino's like all right and drops her to the ground as he's coming up to strangle just fucking takes off the one shoe real quick <laughs> yeah. um in uh. Fucking, what's that one movie called? Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. He's got two of them. He's got two feet moments. Yep. He's got the uh, the one where Sharon Tate's in the the movie theater, and she puts up her gross, dirty feet. Mm-hmm. For some reason, they're fucking disgusting. 
<laughs> and then when the underage girl goes with uh, Cliff Booth, and then she she puts her feet up on the dashboard of the car. Yep, which is super dangerous. Which is do that. which is also fucking gross. <laughs> I think it's so funny, like when you actually like know that fact about him. Though it's like yeah. shit, dude. Then you notice it, like everywhere every you fuck, time. every movie you watch, he's got a foot part. At least most of them. I should. I don't. I don't know. Like there might be some that I'm not able to like conjure up right now. Like I don't know if there's anything like that in Hateful Eight. I don't think there's anything in Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, in Reservoir Dogs, because there's like no females in yeah, that whole. There's no movie. females in that at all. Um, I know oh. there is in Pulp Fiction. Where's the feet there? It's the one girl when she's like vagina. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Or no, sorry, that's um, that's what you fucking call it. Which one? That's the Big Lebowski. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, it's that girl who looks like that girl in uh, Pulp Fiction, the one with uh, all the piercings and shit. Yeah, I don't know. I can't. Um, I'm sure there's a shot of Uma Thurman taking off her fucking shoes or something. Too. Yes, I'm sure there is. <laughs> That's what I need. Is I need a fucking foot fetish compilation video of every Tarantino movie. <laughs> I'm sure there is one. <laughs> I'm sure there is one. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I heard. I heard that he was doing his alleged last movie. So I'm like, all right, whatever. Like, dude has yet to make a bad film, as far as I'm concerned. I think he even said that he considers Death Proof his worst movie, and he's like, if that's my worst one, then I think I did all right. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> Death Proof is a stupid fucking movie, but like, it's fun and I enjoy it. <laughs> I thought it was good. Now, what's uh, what do you think is Wes Anderson's perverted thing? Ninety degree angles. <laughs> no, if you're talking about with people. No, like just you know, what's his thing? What's his perverted thing? Yeah, what's his thing that he loves to put in his movies? Every single one. Well, the ninety degree angles, um, a ninety degree like camera pivots. He does that a lot. Yeah, he does. Um, I don't know. I think um, people with, like, bad relationships with their family. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Like, ba th that, like bad family relationships. Like, bad family relationships, like, that's a pretty big one. I mean, he made an entire movie about that and the uh, Royal Tenenbaums. Yep. So. <laughs> and then I think... Role, um, not always a satisfying ending with his characters. Yeah. He loves to have someone just kind of be, like, still pretty miserable or numb. Yeah, but I think that's... But I think that's, uh... I think that's what's kind of compelling about it, though, is that, like, it's kind of like a study in, in characters who are making, you know, even, like, just gradual growth in themselves, you know? Like within the span of a film, depending upon how long the actual series of events takes place in, like, it's kind of hard to say that a person would really, like, commit to any life change within that period of time. Yeah. You know? So I think part of it is kind of like, you know, through the circumstances that they're put through, they realize, you know, certain things within themselves that could be, you know... That have been affecting them or that, you know, whatever. Yeah. So. The one that always gets me is the fucking Darjeeling and Limited. Yeah. Like it just I makes me one. feel bad. Yeah. At the end. Like, I'm just angry at the mother. Well, that, but the, but therein is like the character that is the unchanging element of the story, right? Yeah. Like, she's the one that, like, is the static element, I think. Yeah. And it just, it, you know, because all. The whole thing was to get to her, and you know. Yeah, they get to her. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna understand why that's unsatisfying, but I think that's kind of the whole point: is that they were yeah. willing to put themselves through this entire journey for the sake of, you know. And even then, like the the, the brothers didn't want to be there, but kind of what brought it about was, you know, um, I think his name is Francis, but Owen Wilson's character who like tries to, you don't know it at the time, but he he admits it later that he attempted to commit suicide on his fucking yep. 
bicycle or whatever. And then it's like the saddest one of them. Yeah, but that's that's probably my favorite Wes Anderson film is is that one because it's like I don't know it just I think it gets really personal. Yeah, which I like. Personally, I like the Royal Ten Mountains the most. That's a good one. I like that one too. Yeah. When I was younger, I didn't like it because I just didn't really understand it. But like, I like that one a lot too because well, because it's, it's the same kind of deal as like you know. There's this family who's got this father figure who's like you know the unchanging element. Like he, it yeah. takes like the entire movie for him to even like contemplate like you know or like realize that you know he hasn't been a great person. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I yeah. just feel like every movie that I watch from him makes me feel bad <laughs> for at least one character. Yeah, right. Like really makes and, me uh, feel like. Super uh, empathy for that. Person. Yeah, right, right, right. Like, I haven't, um, uh, I haven't uh, seen his new one. He put out a new one like last year. I forgot what the fuck it's called. It's I like know, the French something. Yeah, the French something. I um, forgot what it's called, but yeah. I know the uh, Isle of Dogs is the one that I still need to see, and then that one's okay. The animation mm-hmm. in that one is really good. Um, if it's like. Uh, where the fuck am I supposed to go? I'm kind of just on autopilot right now, yeah. but we're we're at the end of the episode anyway. Um, yeah, that one, that one, <laughs> like the animation was really good. I don't really remember much about the story, but it's like it's it's good. It's worth watching. Uh, uh, all right. Well, next time on Chinstrap Chaps, Billy will have watched the Isle of Dogs, and we can talk about that next time. Uh, hopefully. Hopefully.